Married or not, it's good info to have. So one day, if you do get married, you know what's required of you in marriage. Amen? Amen. Um, and if you have been married before, thank you, Jesus, and may not be married now because maybe you went through a divorce or whatever, what the Bible says about that. Uh, we got to make sure that whatever we do in life, our lives and our lifestyle meets up with the word of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It has to be if you want to go to heaven. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you don't want to go to heaven, don't do none of this. You don't even know why you're listening to me. <laughs> I don't know why you're watching us online. I don't know why you go to any church if you don't want to go to heaven. But I'm talking to those who want to be heaven bound. Those who want to get off that downward road. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But we're going to cover some stuff. And now look, marriage and divorce and remarriage is something that is uh, contradicting amongst people that claim that are, they are believers, which it shouldn't be. There should be no contradiction with what I believe to what you believe or to what your preacher believe or what some other preacher believe when we all are using the Bible. What happens is people really want to do certain things and so they go through the scripture and try and find uh, loopholes. But God got this thing tied all the way up. You can't loop out of it. Only thing is you can loop in it. And when you're in it, you're in it till death do your part. <laughs> Hallelujah. So in the outset, marriage, thank you Jesus, is an institution created by God. Hmm? I think I was talking to somebody the other day. I said, well, I don't understand why people who are not believers in the Lord, I don't understand why a person who say they are atheists, why they would even get married. Like, what's the purpose? Yeah. You know? Marriage was governed by God. It was created by God. But you say you don't believe in God, so why are you getting into something God created? <laughs> huh? commitment you can be committed to something without being married to it well like why you got to go say I do huh? but anyway um, marriage goes all the way back to the book of Genesis hmm? all the way back to Genesis okay, with Adam and Eve all right let me bring something to your attention that you probably never thought about Marriage was before any commandment was given. You understand that? Before God gave any commandment and said, thou shalt not, that was marriage. And I like to start with that because I've heard people say this statement. Like, before they knew the Lord, before they got baptized in Jesus' name, before they really started serving God from the heart. Maybe they were married previous to coming to the Lord. And they left their spouse or wants to leave their spouse. Okay? And they try and say, well, that marriage wasn't in the Lord. So I'm free to marry again because that marriage wasn't within the Lord. That's not true. Okay? That marriage was before I became part of the church. So that is void. That's not true. Because marriage was before the law. <laughs> Everybody with me? So God created this institution called marriage. So now when you decide that you're going to get married, you decided to walk under the institution that is governed by God and his word before the law. And that marriage is until death do your part. Hmm? Those vows you made in front of the few people or hundreds of people or thousands of people that you had at your wedding, those vows you made till death do your part, those vows you made, you made that before God Almighty, not before the people. That was for the Lord, 
Letting God know, I'm going to be with them. Huh? You didn't have to do that, but you chose to. All right? You chose to. So now, you get married, okay? Now things are not as sunshine and roses like you thought it would be. Huh? The Bible governs us on how to handle these things. Hmm? What do we do if my spouse goes out and cheat on me? The Bible gives us instructions on how to handle that. Hmm? And no, if your spouse go cheat on you, that is not an out for you to divorce them or you can't divorce them. That's just your cheating wife, your cheating husband. That's what it is. Yeah. And I know some preachers like to get slay and, and uh, yes, I would like to have a different message for you because I want you to be happy in life. But I can't give you instructions or or give you a teaching that's not supported by the scripture. I would love for you to be in a happy marriage. I would love for you to be able to, if that one didn't work out, go get another one. And if that one don't work out, go get another one. And if that one don't work out, just keep on doing it until you find one that's going to make you happy. I wish I could instruct you that way. Actually, I don't wish because I, 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 I'm, I'm so sold on God's word. But I would like for you to be happy. And if you could get away with that and still go to heaven... More power to you, but you can't. No, some people got more marriages than Hollywood people. <laughs> huh? But if my wife or your wife or your husband go cheat on you, the Bible tells you how to deal with that. And no, in the outset, we're gonna get scripture, but let me go ahead and tell you in the outset. No, it's not an out for you to leave them and go marry somebody else. Now, you can separate from them. You don't have to be with them. There's a difference from divorcing and separating. See? Being separated, you still bound to that vow, but you just don't live under the same roof. You ain't got to live under the same roof with your spouse. Huh? Maybe he runs all the money out of the house. Maybe he gambles all the money. You say, well, I'm going to take the kids and we leave him because I can't live and survive raising my children with you being the authority over this house and over the money. I got to leave and this is going to be the best thing for me and the children so we can at least have a place to stay because if I stay with you, we're going to be homeless because you gambling all the money away. You spending all the money on your addiction. You spending all the money on your pornography films and books, huh? And things that is not needed. This stuff is going on. See? So you can separate, but the Bible says you must remain as you are. What do you mean remain as you are? You still married to him and you can't have nobody else. You got to stay the way you are. Huh? Now, the law of the land. And this is what you got to do. look. We do abide by the laws of the land until it contradicts with the word of God. See? Obeying the speed limit out there is not contradicting with the word of God. <laughs> That's a law of the land. Huh? Paying my taxes to the to, to Caesar or to the to the state, whatever. That's not going against the laws of God. We'll buy those laws. But now when the law, when the state law or the federal government tell me, oh, I can divorce and marry somebody else while my first spouse is still alive, now that's where it contradicts the word of God. And that's where we draw a line in the sand and say, nope. Right. I'm obeying all the laws of land except for that one. Right. Hmm? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. All right. We're going to get scripture here. I'm just, I know some people out there online don't never sit and watch the whole video. So I got to throw it all out there so they'll know. And then hopefully they'll stay and get the scripture to support what I'm saying. You see? So, law say you can divorce. Okay? But not God. Amen. Hmm? I had a man coming to the church. He said, man, I need some counseling. 
me and my girl, we going through a hard time and, and we need some counseling. And he never stepped foot in here at all for a service, but he walked past the church, he saw the number, he called, they want to counsel. I said, okay, you and her, meet me at the church. See? I ain't going to do no counseling with you one-on-one -on -one and then do counseling with her one. No, I'm going to do it with both of y'all. Because you ain't going to go home and say and mix my words up. <laughs> See? So, I'm sitting there waiting on him to come to the church, and I only see one person rolling up the street. And I said, well, I didn't know what the person looked like. Never met him before. I just talked to him on the phone. I said, well, that might be him, but maybe not, because I don't see a woman with him. He walks in here. It was him, but he was by himself. See? We sat right here in this little area over here. <clears throat> Asked him what was going on, what he needed help with. <clears throat> and from the outset, I told him, listen, you don't know me. And I don't know you, and that's fine. I'll sit here, and I'm going to give you biblical scripture for whatever question or concern you have. We're going to the Bible about it. I'm not going to tell you what I think or my opinion. We're going to the book. Okay? Y'all go ahead and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Go ahead and find out why I tell y'all this story here. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Somebody also remind me to get Romans chapter 7. So... He says, he said, well, we just got so many problems and we've been praying for God to work it out and we want God to work all this stuff out, blah, blah, blah. And it hit me. I said, before I go deep into this conversation, let me ask him, has he been married before? Because you want me to pray for your relationship to work out. But it ain't no need for me to pray if it ain't in God's will for it to work out. Well, preacher, how could you know if the relationship is in God's will or not? Well, first off, let me ask you this. Have you or her been married before? He said, well, she hasn't, but I have. Okay. My follow-up question was, well, is your first wife still alive? His answer was yes. So here's a man that came to the preacher for counseling because he wants his relationship with his new girl to work out. But he got a living wife. And he wants me to pray that the relationship works out. And I told him, look, man, ain't no need for me to pray for it to work out. It ain't supposed to work out. And that's the part he didn't like. I said, you got a living wife. She can go marry whoever she wants to because she's free. But you still bound to your vows that you made before God. And he sat back and he tried to, I think he did this on purpose, showed his little gun, showed the handle of his gun on his side when he kind of leaned over to the side a little bit. And I said, this joke going to brought a gun in the church. The devil tried to make me afraid because I saw a gun. See, I ain't scared of your gun. Huh? I suppose a backup on the word of God because he slightly brandished his gun a little bit the way his shirt lifted up. You see? But I stood on the word and I told him you can't have another one. And I'm not going to pray for you for that marriage to work, for your relationship to work out because it ain't supposed to work out. She free to marry who she wants to but you bound to your wife who's still living. According to the Bible now. Do I want that man to be happy in a relationship? Yes, I do. But can I lie? Should I lie to him so he can be happy? No, I can't do that. Because now I get in trouble with God. Hmm? First Corinthians chapter 7. And... Verse number one. Okay. Everybody there? First Corinthians chapter seven, verse number one. And this is Paul writing to the church about marriage. Okay. He said, now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me. So they wrote to Paul. See, y'all see that? 
He said, concerning the things that y'all wrote to me. So they was asking the preacher a question, and the preacher's responding. That's why I love question and answer. I love question and answer sessions. Uh, give the people a chance to ask things, to, to get stuff off their chest, and, and, and get them involved in the service, you know? I want to know what you're thinking about. What, what's your concern? What, what are you interested in learning about? See? And then we can start tapping into what you're interested in learning about and not just what I believe God gave me to give you. <laughs> huh? Which I'm going to give you what God gave me to give you. God do speak, but I'd like to see what you've been studying and, and hear from you as to what we should dive into. Huh? So he said, now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Okay. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. Look, let every man have his what? Not another man's wife, his own. <laughs> huh? You marry, you divorce her, she's still living, and you're going to get somebody else. Huh? Or she been divorced, and you're going to remarry her. She divorced, got to live with her husband, and, not, and you're going to marry her. That ain't your own wife. That's another man's wife you laying with, man. Huh? That's another man's, that's a, a, another woman's man you laying with. Woman? Huh? And now, just because of the times we living in, the Sodom and Gomorrah, that's another man's husband you living with, man. <laughs> that's another woman's wife you living with, woman. These LGBTQ folk. Hmm? You got to come out of that mess too. All that is fornication. If a man sleep with another man, he's having intercourse with a man, that's fornication. And homosexuality. If a woman is having intercourse with another woman, that's fornication. And lesbianism. And adultery. Man, that's a that's three of them, huh? <laughs> huh? We gotta address it all. Hallelujah. And the shame churches ain't getting this teaching. Imagine if Joel Steve with them thousand people he got, he taught this. Ooh, them folk will leave the church. They will leave the church. Ain't that sad? People are leaving churches because of true teaching. That lets us know people are not coming to church because they want good teaching and they want to learn more and grow in God. They just going for a social gathering. But man, you could did that on Saturday. Huh? You could did that all last week. What you gonna gather for just for a social gathering? Come get some truth and learn and grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Jude, the Bible said, let us grow in the grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. People don't want to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. They just want to grow in grace. God, give me more grace. Huh? Give me more mercy. That's what people want. They want God to keep on abounding grace upon them, multiplying grace upon them, but they don't want to repent. Ain't that a hot mess? If you don't think it's a hot mess, it's still a hot mess. Hmm? The Bible in the book of Romans chapter 6 said, chapter 6 and verse 1 said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Hmm? Amen. Amen. All right. Everybody at verse number two? First Corinthians 7 and 2. Y'all yeah. read this together with me. One, two, three, read. Nevertheless, what? Uh-huh. See, look. Marriage is to avoid fornication. Y'all see that? 
It ain't nothing wrong. If you hot and you want some sex, get married. You can have all of you want. But if you ain't married, you better keep yourself. If you don't, you're in fornication. And let me tell you something. Them little 30 seconds of pleasure ain't worth hell. Because that's all that's going to last, about 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, about 30. Okay. <laughs> 45 seconds here. You're going you gonna to be under 60. Well, why? Because you're so hot. You're going to get off that fast, and then it's just over, and now here comes condemnation a minute later. Hmm? And it ain't worth it. Okay? But nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman what? Have our own husband. Not another man's husband. I mean another man's wife. Not another woman's husband. But your own. So now, you have to ask yourself. Some of you that are watching me, you might be in a marriage right now. The question is, is that your own husband? Or are you living with someone else's husband? Is that your own wife? Or are you living with someone else's wife? If they've been married prior to you, come on here. If they've been married prior to marrying you, and they divorced them or left them or whatever, okay? And the first one that they had is still alive, and now they're with you while the first one's still alive, you are in adultery. Hmm? I'm glad I got this message for you. Hallelujah. Because somebody need the truth. Because somebody's sitting up under a line preacher right now telling them different. Huh? You know why those preachers are preaching it different? You know why those preachers are making them feel like they okay sitting in their adultery? Because he's been married two and three times. Yeah. He's been married multiple times. And so he got to teach you because if he teach against it now, he's condemning himself. Hmm? Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad my bishop trained me up to preach the word as it is. Even if God, there'll be sometimes I'll be reading some of the stuff, I'll be like, my God, Lord, you are whooping my behind up here. But I still got to give it to you the way it is. I can't not give it to you because the word found me and I happen to be in it. Huh? I need to take the word just like you got to take the word. And then on my own time, examine myself, repent of whatever I need to repent of. Get my behind together. Come right back up here and preach again. And then God going to find me with something else again. Why? He's always undressing us and dressing us. God is addressing you to undress you from your filthiness. And when you take off the filthiness, he's going to dress you with holiness. Come on. You get a dress so you can undress to get dressed again. But this time we're going to have on a robe of pure white. Come on here. Hallelujah. Take off them filthy garments. Huh? They're doing you harm. Hallelujah. All right? So everybody got to evaluate themselves. Yeah. Now somebody said, well, I got married when I was about 17, 18 years old, and, and, and I've lost contact with that man or that woman that I had married. And I don't know if they're alive or not. Well, you better remain as you are. You might have lost contact with them. Well, I married them, then they went off into the military, and when they came back, they left me, and I've lost all contact, and it's been 20, 30 years ago, and I don't know where they are, I don't know what they're doing, I can't find them. You better stay single. You don't know if they're dead or not, you just going to take that chance and just, and just go to hell over hoping that they, so you can marry somebody, and you hoping that they're dead? Nah, uh-uh. My advice to you would be, Try and locate them. Huh? And, and, and before you bring it up to me, tell me something you want to marry somebody, I'm going to need a death certificate. Yeah. I'm going to need a death certificate. 
Hey, before I marry you, you talking about you've been married to somebody else before you lost contact. You better go find and get a death certificate. Huh? We living in a time now people come to you and ask the preacher to marry them. The preacher got to go behind them and go down to the courthouse and check and make sure they ain't been married in the state before. Because folk come to your line. Oh, no, no. They know that I stand on this teaching like this, right? And then they want me to marry them. And I got to do homework and go down to the courthouse and make sure their name ain't listed on another marriage certificate from the past. Because folk will come to your line. Ain't that a hot mess? Yeah, yeah. Hmm? All right. Verse 3. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. In other words, what he's saying right there is uh, you can't be uh, holding good from your wife. You can't be holding sexual intercourse from your wife or your husband. Uh, my wife made me mad. I said, well, you ain't getting none today. No, you can't do that. Run under her due benevolence. <laughs> and she can't do that to me. Yeah. That's the Bible. Y'all know the Bible addressed that stuff? Yeah. Some women be trying to put it on lockdown, put a lock on it. <laughs> you gonna act crazy. I can handle you. You ain't getting nothing. Clank, clank. You're going to get in trouble with God, woman. Huh? You're going to get in trouble with God, man. You can't deny your husband when he wants it. And vice versa. Yeah. See? Now, 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 listen now. Your husband went out there and slept around with some whores in the street. And you don't know if he got AIDS or HIV. Yeah, I wouldn't lay down with that joke. You better go get tested. <laughs> before you try and bring that back up in this house. Huh? See, now that's, that's different. That ain't you trying to do that because you mean. That's you protecting yourself so you don't die from an STD. Y'all understand? Okay? Mm, it get deep, don't it? Huh? I give you a whole bunch of stuff to think about, right? Mm, but it's good. That's what it's supposed to be. You're learning. You're growing. See, right now, you, right now you're growing spiritually. Huh? Some people gonna click on this video. Some of you that are here, you probably never heard this taught in the church before. Huh? People ain't teaching this stuff in church. What are they teaching the church? Oh God, go put the collard greens on the table. He gonna allow the cornbread to come out the oven hot. Them sweet potato yams, God will provide. Oh, that was a little dog walking down the street. Hey, little, little, the cat in the fiddle. God gonna work it out tonight. All that stuff. Folk jumping up and down, shouting over collard greens. And then left church and ain't got nothing to sustain them spiritually. I don't want you to come to church with a, a good shout, good feeling. Hey, I can give you a good feeling. Huh? All I got to do is start singing a worship song. You probably bust out in tears thinking about the Lord. Oh, that's good. But at the end of the day, you need the word of God. It's the word that's going to help you through your trials. It's the word like this going to help you when your spouse get to acting crazy. Hmm? Thank you, Jesus. All right. Verse 4. He said, 1 Corinthians 74, The wife have not power over her own body, but the husband. Amen. In other words, that's what he's talking about. You can't be holding your body from your husband when he wanted. But he didn't stop there. You men didn't get away either. And likewise also, the husband have not power over his own body, but the wife. See, the Bible says the two come together, the, the, the twain shall be one. See? Thank you, Jesus. Your body, her body. Her body, his body. Huh? Don't y'all get worldly on me now. Hmm? <laughs> that song. My body. All over your body. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> huh? This is what the Bible's addressing. Marriage. He said in verse 5, defraud ye not one 
the other. Okay? In order to deprive me like to deprive, okay? Don't don't be trying to keep you yourself from your spouse. But he gives an exception. Y'all ready for the exception? Except for what? Look, except for consent. In other words, you don't do it out of depriving or defraud. You go to your spouse and you let them know, hey, can are you okay with me not doing anything with you for a few days? Why? Because I need to go to the Lord. I need to fast. Huh? See, here's something else they ain't teaching in churches. When you fasting, you ain't supposed to be having sex with your wife or your husband. Mm -hmm. Let's read it. Watch this. Verse 5. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be, look, with consent for a time. Not forever, but for a time. <laughs> that what? Ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. Y'all see that? That's the only except. The only time you don't give your wife none or your husband none, and this is with consent. It's only when you're going before the Lord for fasting and prayer. See? So, watch this. Your wife might be feeling high, but she married to the preacher. And the preacher said, look, I got to go to the Lord. I need to be fast. I need to go. God told me to go on a three-day fast. Okay? We're not going to be able to touch each other for three days. And I'll consent with her on that. See? That's what you're supposed to do. And if your wife's spiritual minded, she ain't going to have no problem with it at all. But every wife ain't spiritual minded and every husband ain't spiritual minded. Maybe it's a woman that say, look, I need to go on a three day fast. So my flesh been bothering me and I'm seeking God for something spiritual. You OK with me going on this fast because we ain't going to be able to touch each other, or have sex for these next three days. See? And if he's spiritual, he say, sure. Or he or she might say, all right, look, let's get it in real quick, and then you can start your fast. <laughs> That's completely fine. It's the Bible. Do your thing, and I'll see you in three days. <laughs> you see? All right? So that's the exception. But then he tells you, he said, uh, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. Look, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinencies, okay? And what, what that means is like your lack of self-control. See? So he tells you, he said, look, after your fast, look, make sure you husband and wives come back together and take care of your business in the room because Satan's going to tempt you. Huh? Because you ain't had none in those three days or that week or the two weeks or the 21 days or the month, however long they decide to do their fast. He said, but after the fast, you make sure you come together because Satan's going to tempt you. Lest he get the, the hand of you because of your lack of self-control. Why is he saying the lack of self-control? The lack of inconsistencies. Because when you marry, you do have intercourse. And your flesh has been woken up. So your flesh is going to desire that feeling. But you can't have that feeling with somebody else at the house. That's adultery. Can only be with your spouse. Huh? Now I ain't going to tell y'all what to do. When I say in the house, I ain't literally talking about, you know, it got to be in the bedroom or it got to be here, there. And you been, no. That's y'all thing. Do your thing. Just don't get arrested. <laughs> y'all know what I'm saying. <laughs> don't be out here in the middle of the street. <laughs> don't get caught in a the movie theater now being crazy. Huh? Get your room, whatever you're going to do, okay? Just don't, you know. All right, anyway, y'all know what I'm saying. Verse 6, but I speak this by permission and not of commandment. For I would. Now listen. The first thing that Paul was saying in verses 1 through 5, okay? He was getting that from the Lord. Now, in verse 7, he's about to address something. He's about to say something. But he makes sure he lets you know in verse 6 that this part 
is not a commandment from God, but God has given me permission to say it. Y'all with me? So in verse 6, he say, but I speak this by permission and not of commandment. All right, y'all with me? So this next part ain't by commandment, it's by permission. Now, listen to the apostle now. God gave him permission to say this. He said, for I would that all men were even as myself. What do you mean by that? Paul didn't have a wife. Paul wasn't married. So Paul is saying, this ain't commandment. And this is where the Catholic Church mess up in. They tell their priests and they pope that they can't be married. See? And that's why they're molesting all them boys because they got that lust in them. They really want that, that fire burning in them that, that, that they wanted to be uh, fulfilled and satisfied. But their religion told them you can't have a wife. And so they turn to homosexuality and pedophilia. So that's a demon. So he said, I would that it were as myself, but every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. See, Paul had a gift. See, he didn't need a wife. Paul was a eunuch. He was like a eunuch. He didn't need a wife. See? But the thing why Paul is saying that is because of this. When you're married, and he says this later on in the chapter, he said, a married man has to care for the things of the world and how he can please his wife. But an unmarried man only cares about the things of the Lord and how he can please the Lord. Okay? Perfect example. And I hate when this happened, but uh, it happened to me. So, you know, you be trying to study a word and stuff. But I got a family. So, my wife needs something. I got to get up from the study table and go do whatever she needs or handle that. And then I sit back down and I try and read. And the kids come in and the kids need something. And I need to attend to them before they break something. And I just can't sit and just deal with God and the word because I have other um, responsibilities. And I got to care for the things of the house and the things of the world on how I can please them and please my wife. But also try and please the Lord too. Okay? But a man who ain't got a wife, he can just go into the word with no distractions and fully study his word and fully care about the things of God for that moment. You see? So that's what Paul is saying here. I, I would that men would be like me, like unmarried, because you ain't got to care about the things where you can just fully give yourself to God. But when you marry, you give yourself to God and to your spouse. Y'all with me? Yeah. Okay. But I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them that they abide even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. See, he said, if you can't contain, you can't keep yourself and you just that hot and you just need some, he said, then go get married then. For it is better to marry than to burn. It's better to marry than to go to hell in fornication. Right? <laughs> right? Huh? Alright. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Now he said, look, now the Lord talking again. Y'all see that? Everybody with me verse 10? Yes. And unto the married I command, and he said, yet not I, but the Lord. So in verse 7 and 8, he said, look, what I'm telling you is permission from God to say it, but not a commandment. Now, we have verse 10. He said, now look, now the Lord is commanding something in verse 10. Y'all with me? He said, yet not I, but the Lord. What did the Lord command? He said, what? Let not what? Let not the wife do what? He said, if you're married, don't leave your husband. Y'all with me? Yeah. But. Everybody say but. but. They didn't hear you on TV. Say but. but. <laughs> There's a but there. He said look. You married women. He said do not leave your husbands. But. 
And if, somebody say if. if. He said, don't do it. But if you do it, <laughs> let her remain unmarried. Come on, ain't it plain? He said, don't leave your husband. But, and if you do, and this came from the Lord, let her remain unmarried or what? Or go back to your husband. The judge can slam the gavel. Huh? The sentence has been given, right? Ain't that plain? How can preachers twist that up? Somehow they do and get people believing it. And the people, the only reason they believe it is because they really want to do that remarriage. They really got that spirit of adultery in their heart. And he just wants to be fulfilled. And rather than them repenting and fighting from it and asking God to help them with it, they just fall into it. And they found them a preacher who would make them feel good in their sin, make them feel accepted. And they'll say, that's got to be my church because they're going to marry me. They gonna, I can't go down there to Pastor Brian Richardson Church at New Ransom Church of the Living God because he's not going to accept the lifestyle that I want to live. It ain't about me accepting it. It's whether God accepts it or not. You're concerned about acceptance from man rather than from God. Huh? Ain't it plain? He said, but and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. Huh? So he addressed both of them. He said, woman, don't leave your husband. Man, don't put your wife away. But if y'all decide to do that, stay unmarried. You can't have nobody else. You've been taken off the board. Ain't that simple? Mm. And now again, I can't give you nothing different. No matter how bad I want to, well, it ain't that bad. I don't, I don't want to go to hell that bad for nobody. <laughs> want to go to hell that bad for no? I'd rather you be mad at me and not be pleasing in God's sight than for me to tell you a lie so you can be happy and feel good and feel like you got an out. And then I don't wake up in the morning. I go to hell for lying to you. And then God take me off the scene. And he going to send another preacher your way to tell you what I should have told you. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. That's what that happened to some of you. You done went to a preacher. And they told you a lie. They told you you could remarry. And you took them at their word. And now God got you coming by me. He got your ears coming near me so that you can get some truth because the other chicken preacher wouldn't give you the truth that God wanted him to give to you. And I'm pretty sure if you do a background check on him, he'd have been married about two, three, four, five times himself. Hmm? Ain't that a hot mess? But y'all see what the words say, right? Now look, I'm not here to make nobody believe nothing. I can't make you do nothing. All I'm here is to give you the information and I hope you receive it and be pleasing in God's sight. See? Because there is an out for you. But it ain't the out you think. <laughs> huh? And somebody said, well, what if my husband mistreating me and, 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 and he beating on me and, and he, he been abusive to me or he, he's, he's just, I just can't live with him because I don't feel safe around him. You ain't got to live with them. You can separate. You see what the Bible said? He said, don't depart from them. But if you do, stay unmarried. You see? A woman ain't got to live with a man who beat on her. It's better to live unmarried than to live in that house and then he end up killing you or crippling you or hospitalizing you. You see what I'm saying? Huh? So go on, take the kids. If the kids are involved, go and find your own place or go to a, a woman, a place where they help women in need. Huh? 
Women and children in need. If you in Louisville, Kentucky, they got the Women and Children's Family Center. Huh? They help women uh, with children who have no place to go and all of that. And they can help you and give you resources to help you get on your feet. See? But you and your kids are safe. Or you are safe. Huh? See? And then he gonna come calling me. I'm so sorry. You done seen this. You done seen this circle before, yeah. huh? It's the violence circle. Uh -huh. They got honeymoon phases, yeah. huh? And the violence wheel. Can't quite remember how it all go, but it goes around and and then the, it happens again, and then they come back and they say they're sorry. And, they, and then it starts back up on the upside, huh? And, they, and I'm sorry, and they're honeymoon, and they're they loving, and then, bam, they snap again. They're triggered again. That man got a problem. He need the Holy Ghost. That woman got a problem. She need the Holy Ghost. I got to address both sides, because men ain't the only one beating on people. Some women are lay a haymaker on some men. Some men scatter their wives. Yeah. Some men scatter their wives. Yeah, come to you. Man, that woman crazy. Huh? <laughs> man, she crazy. Lord, what did I do? My mama told me not to marry her, but I just thought she looked so good. Should listen to my mama. <laughs> Uh, man, she beat on me. She hit like a man. I'm scared to go to sleep. She sleep with a knife on the side of the bed. I had to take the guns out the house because she's just crazy. <laughs> I work overtime so I ain't got to go home. <laughs> man, I worked the <laughs> man, I worked the 10-hour shift. He gonna stay for another eight. Calling home, I got to say, and she thinking he cheat. Huh? Jealousy is a hot mess, boy, I tell you. Huh? Jealousy is something. But all right, let's get back in there. But you got to out. But then the out people think. God say don't separate. But and if you do, remain unmarried. Okay? I would, I would not advise... Someone to stay in abuse in an abusive relationship. Hmm? Thank you, Jesus. I'll just give you what the Bible said. Now that decision is yours, but I give you what the Bible said about it. Hmm? And I don't know how severe things could be. So I can't tell you to, oh no, oh, you can't leave her. No, the Bible said you can separate, you just can't divorce. Separate me, you, you ain't no longer living with him, but you're still married to him. Yeah. If he's abusive, that's your abusive husband. Right. If he's a cheater, that's your cheating husband. Don't give you no out to leave. Huh? So there's a scripture in the gospel, uh, I think it's in Matthew, where it talks about, uh, it says, uh, you can't uh, divorce your wife except for the cause of fornication. Okay, that's what it say, except for the cause of fornication. Now, they got these new translations out here, the NIV version stuff, and it says except for uh, unfaithfulness or sexual immorality is some of the uh, other ones. But what they're trying to say is that the only way you can divorce is if your, ch if your spouse cheat on you. So what you got people doing, you got them spying and, and, and hiring uh, uh, private investigators to try and find their spouses cheating so that they can feel comfortable with divorcing them and remarrying the person that they really want in their life. There's somebody behind the scene that they want, but they can't have them. So they need an out with God, God, the Bible, quotation marks, for those of you who are not watching or can't see and just listening to the word. Huh? God with quotation marks. They're trying to find an out. So they hire people to try and find little avenues of, okay, he cheated. He was in that hotel room with that woman. He cheated. So, yes, now I can get my divorce and I can marry Bill because Bill's going to be a better man for me. That's how people operate. 
Ain't no out for you. The Bible said, except for the cause of fornication. And when I say fornication, that means it had to happen prior to marriage. Because a married person can't commit fornication. A married person can only commit adultery. Amen? So what that means is, and it ain't talking about you've been married to them for, for uh, three months or six months or six years or 60 years. And then all of a sudden you find out before y'all got married, they lied to you and you thought you was getting a virgin. But you really was getting uh, somebody who was sleeping around prior to your marriage. But you've been with them all these years. So now you think you can leave because you got no, no, no. Mm -mm. If I marry a woman, okay, and she tell me from now, now if you knew that your wife was a fornicator prior to y'all getting married, that's over. But this is talking about a man is going to marry a woman who she's led him to believe that she was a virgin, but she wasn't. So they entered that marriage on the basis of a lie anyway, okay? Now, both of y'all know that y'all both was fornicators in the world. Yeah, that's just over with. If y'all got married, you just done. You're married. This is talking about a woman being deceptive, making a man think that she was a virgin and she wasn't. And then on a wedding day, I find out she ain't no virgin. I can leave. I can't stay the night with her now. <laughs> huh? And say, well, we're going to finish what we're doing, but then tomorrow I'm out of here because you lied to me. Nah, uh, uh, mm, mm. You can't be three years into that marriage and now you tell me something, mm, I got to leave now. Nah, mm, mm, no. Huh? You see the extent people go to just to leave somebody? Yeah. You didn't got a taste of her goods and now you want to leave? No, mm, mm. Okay. Let's move on. Amen, Amen anyhow. Uh, verse 13 and the woman which have a husband that believe him not okay he going into believing and unbelieving okay let's read this here and the woman which have a husband that believe him not and if he be pleased to dwell with her let her not leave him see this is for you people trying to say well my husband ain't saved and so uh, the bible said marry only in the lord and I marry him but he's not in the lord so I can, no if he desire to be with you, be with him. See that? See, he covers all bases. God knew the avenues people were trying to go to to get out of something. Why did you even enter this institution? Why did you just keep on shacking? What the Bible calling Timothy forbidding to marry. You could have just stayed in fornication. At least you could have left and you ain't bound to him. <laughs> That's what people do. People be with people for five years, seven years, ten years, fifteen years, never get married. But they done raised kids together. They done brought them up through school. Some of them got them through college. They've been paying bills together. They done bought a house together like they're married. They doing everything together like they're married. Paying bills, both of them working. They splitting the bills. They doing this. They taking care of business just like a married couple. And after seven years, he finally proposed. And she say, I do. And they get married. And now that even, they ain't even married for 12 months. She want to leave him. What? Y'all was just together for 7 to 10 years without marriage. And you didn't up and leave. Now you are married. And now you just can't take it no more. But you didn't did it for 10 years. What? Y'all know why? The devil behind that mess. The devil was okay with them standing for an occasion because they was outside of God's will. Now they done joined that thing together and now their relationship is pleasing to God. He's like, well, you can't be them. Now he wants them divorced and they get them somebody else and now they're in adultery and now the devil going to leave them on. Now they'll stay married for 30 years. Why? Because they're in adultery. He wants them to stay in that adultery. Y'all yeah. <laughs> see how the devil work? Ain't that something? He's slick, ain't he? For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. 
But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. Now let me explain that. What he mean is that unbelieving spouse, okay, is not bound by the word of God like you are because they ain't saved. You saved. You know what God's words say. They're going to go out and do what they want if they ain't saved anyway. But you that know the Lord, you know what's required of you. You're the one that's bound to God's word because this walk is an individual walk. If your husband decides to leave you and he want to go sleep with Sally Sue down the street, he can go do that. But you know what you're supposed to be doing. You got to stay unmarried. You got to keep yourself. You can say, who oh, will? He got somebody else and he looking happy. He going to hell. You fighting to go to heaven. And old woman, if you get on your knees and pray and keep living right, don't you know God will bring that man right back to your house, clean him up, give him the Holy Ghost, and give you a happy marriage with the man that you're married to. See? God can fix it. Just be a praying wife. If it take a year, keep on praying. To God, break that spirit and bring that man to his knees. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And have him repent and baptize in the name of Jesus. Yes, and fill him with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. See? Hallelujah. But you make sure you're right. Huh? Right. Yeah. God has called us to peace. Hallelujah. In verse 16, see, that's what he said in verse 16. He said, For what knowest thou, O wife? Whether thou shalt save thy husband. Or oh, how knowest thou, O oh man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? See, the man who got an unbelieving wife or the saved woman who got an unbelieving husband. Hey, don't you know God can save them? Hmm? Get you. Thank you, Jesus. All right? So listen, there's so much more. Didn't Any questions about any of this that we just covered? Real quick, let's go to Romans 7 and I'll let you go. Romans 7. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 7, verse 1. Y'all learn anything tonight? Mm hmm. Hope nobody ain't mad with me. I don't care if you are or not anyway. I ain't able to be your friend. I can be your friend when I get out of the pulpit. <laughs> 7 and 1. <laughs> Romans chapter 7 verse 1. Hmm? Thank you, Jesus. All right. He said, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. How that the law have dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which have an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he lives. See, this is too deaf to your part. This law, this marriage, this bondage that you're in, this marriage that you're in. Not when I say bondage, I'm talking about what you're bound to. Okay. It's still death to your part as long as he lives. But if the husband be dead, what? She is loosed from the law of her husband. See, he ain't talking about like the, 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 command, the law like the commandments of God. He's talking about the law to your husband. Huh? Talking about that marriage law, that, 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 that um, agreement. Hmm? That agreement. He said, now, if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. Ain't that simple? Ain't that plain, plain, plain? Unlike Bishop Williams, that's plain as the nose on your face. <laughs> Ain't that plain as the nose on your face? Huh? If he dead, you loose from that law. But 
if you marry somebody else while he liveth, she shall be called an adulteress. Okay? But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law. He's talking about the law of marriage. So that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Is it simple or not? Right? Okay. Verse 4. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him that is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Hmm? See, then he flips his spiritual. Listen. Serve God. Don't be serving the devil. Don't cheat on God. Don't be a spiritual adulterer against God by cheating on God with the devil. <laughs> huh? Serve Christ. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, so, it's, it's so plain, y'all. It's so plain and so simple. Y'all can read all this on your own time here in Romans 7. Read on down. But listen. Those of you watching us online, um, we'll finish this online and I'll take any questions we got here. Uh, but listen, if you want to be saved, married to the Lord, huh? the Bible said repent. After you repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now watch this. Some of you have been baptized before, but the preacher took you in the water and said, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and don't you in the water. That's incorrect. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, and verse 38, the apostles did not go in the water and say, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and baptize anybody. The only thing they did was, in the name of Jesus Christ. Huh? So when you get baptized, you got to have the name of Jesus called over you. Not the titles of Jesus. Jesus' titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, ain't got no power. It's his name that has the power. That's why we pray, what? In the name of Jesus. We preach in the name of what? Jesus. We do good for people in the name of what? Jesus. Huh? We show people the love of Jesus. Everything we do in word or deed, we do it all in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Baptism should also be done in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you've been baptized before in that little denominational preacher or Catholic priest or whoever, whatever church you went to, non-denomination, I don't care what it is, whether it was your granddad or your grandmama, if they said Father, Son, Holy Ghost, it was wrong. Mm -hmm. Got to have the name of Jesus called over you. So repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for something, for the forgiveness of sins, the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. May God bless you. Hope you learned something tonight. Like, share, subscribe in Jesus' name. All right, we got